so you have created your first field parameter in Power BI and added a few options to allow your users to choose from when it comes to the data width. But one of them came back and asked you to group those parameters in the slicer. Let's say something like this. Fields from the customer table under customer, fields from the product table under product, and all other options under other. If you want to learn how to do it, stick around as this is the topic of today's video. Let's do it! Hello and welcome to Bilingual Analytics. My name is Roland and I'm here to help you to learn more about Power BI. If this is your first time around here, then please start by clicking on the like and subscribe buttons so you wouldn't miss my Power BI tutorials and shorts. It means a lot to me and helps others to find content like this. Thank you. This is going to be another tutorial about field parameters and how can they provide a much better user experience when it comes to Power BI report consumption. As we have a lot of decks to discover today, let's get started. When you create a field parameter, this is the DAX code behind it, or something similar to this, depending on the number of fields you use. And if I switch over to the data view, this is what the parameter table looks like. Every element of the code returns, in a sense, a column in this newly created table. But let's go back to the basics to see how you can write this without using the GUI in Power BI. I'm going to add the new table to my data model and in curly brackets type bilingual analytics. What do we get by doing that? We get a column named value and inside that the text bilingual analytics. Let's add Roland to this separated by a comma. By doing that we generate a second line in the same column with the text Roland in it. As a next step, wrap these two texts within brackets and see what happens. The result is two columns now. Let's split this into two lines and add a bit more text to them. Are you getting the hang of it now? Lastly, let me add the random number generator to represent some sort of a formula in this DAX table. If this is the first time you saw someone creating a table only using DAX, hit the like button. Come on, I can wait. I really wanted to cover the basics of how to create tables with DAX as this is how field parameters are generated and you need to know this to understand what I'm going to do next. Head back to the parameter table that we generated using the GUI. It already has three columns and if we want to group them, all we need to do is just add a new column to the code itself. I would suggest adding it to the end so if something goes pear shape at least it would be easier to remove. Now we have an extra column that we can use for the data width. If I head back to the report canvas and select the slicer, I can just drop in this newly created value for field. And voila, just like that, I managed to group my field parameters in the slicer based on the user feedback. You probably wonder why to go through all this hassle when there is a built-in new column button in Power BI. Good question, and I'm glad you asked. Let's see what happens if I click on that button. While it allows me to create a new column, it no longer shows the existing fields or combination of fields that we were generated by the field parameter. I reckon in most cases it would not be as efficient and as developer friendly as the method I showed you before. And with that said, let's wrap up what we did today. First of all, we learned how to create tables in Power BI using DAX. It was crucial in understanding how to fine-tune or adjust the auto-generated DAX code that Power BI creates for a field parameter. Then, using this knowledge, we added a new field to the parameter table to allow us and our report users to group a sizer selection based on that field. Let's say the tables where the parameters are coming from. Isn't that great? And it only took us a few minutes to go through all of this. It's time for me to ask the question of the day. Are you already using field parameters? Do you like them or love them? Let me know in the comments below along with any other questions that you have about them. Thanks for tuning in today. I hope that you learned something new and interesting from today's video and you will be able to implement this for your report. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons before you leave or before you watch one from the above videos. Until the next one, see ya!